When I took charge of the government two years ago, El Salvador was the country with the highest murder rate per day in Central America and with debilitated institutions. We have to strengthen the institutions because it's pointless to spend money strengthening the police, the interior ministry, the judicial system, if in the end all the resources fall into black holes because the institutions are too weak and cannot cope with the penetration of organized crime. But on the other hand, we also have a huge poverty problem, a lack of opportunity. So when one speaks of the murders in El Salvador, one has to put them in context. In El Salvador is perhaps a victim of its geography. It is part of the triangle, the Central American triangle, from which necessarily the drugs that go from Colombia to Mexico have to pass. What is the connection between the gangs and Mexican drug cartels? We have to take into account the problem of El Salvador's geographical location. El Salvador is no longer just a crossing point for drugs. A large part of the drugs go north, but a significant part is beginning to stay here. The problem that we have is that the gangs, that are obviously not the same thing as organized crime, but operate in the same way and provoke the same results, have been allowed to evolve. In the past, gangs were groups of young people that came from broken homes with few values. Gangs became a substitute for the family or community. Now the gangs have become task forces in the service of organized crime. They have been co-opted by the drug traffickers to carry out the selling and dealing of drugs on a small scale. And the disputes between gangs is not a symbolic dispute. It's a dispute for the control of territory. This was allowed to flourish. They put more emphasis on repressing crime and too little on prevention. But a lot of people accuse you of doing exactly the same thing, uh, bringing the army out onto the street, of continuing with our policy of, of you know, hardline policy. Uh, what's the difference? I think that's an unfair accusation. I'll tell you why. We aren't criminalizing poverty, nor are we militarizing the country. You have to understand what the involvement of the army in national security really means. The Constitution allows it. Why was it necessary? Because we have only 22,000 police, and we need to raise that number in order to regain territorial control. And for this, we're using 8,200 soldiers in the towns with the highest crime rates, watching over 62 blind spots, given that our borders are very permeable, making the penetration of organized crime very easy. We must also put an emphasis on cracking down on crime. The criminals murder, they extort, they kidnap, and therefore we must arrest them and leave them in the hands of the justice system and put them in jail. The ties, the links between Mexican drug cartels such as the Zetas and the, the gangs like the Mara Salvatrucha, which is the largest gang in all of the hemisphere, and there have been intelligence reports that there have been meetings between them. What can you tell me about that? We have intelligence that tells us the Zetas have established contact with gang leaders, particularly the MS, which is the largest in the country and operates in a great part of our territory and has years of accumulated experience. Why have they established contact with them? Precisely because the drug cartels, in this case the Zetas, want to use the Maras or gangs as task forces in the service of organized crime. Now the Zetas, in my opinion, from the information that we have, are not interested in physically operating as a cartel in El Salvador. The characteristics of the Salvadoran territory are not like those of Guatemala or Honduras that have large areas of land without any presence of authority, where they can move easily. In El Salvador, the Zetas have only explored the territory and are hiring, literally hiring, gang leaders so that they can sell and deal the drugs. They're not going to be the ones who directly sell the drugs themselves. They're doing it through the gangs. They've begun exporting as well and even tried to infiltrate the police and the army to obtain weapons. For example, we found out the Zetas broadcast a message to the UMU police, like the riot police in other parts of the world. With what purpose? So that those police, when they they go to Mexico for, say, an internship, are offered $5,000 to start working for the Zetas. They've also looked for low and medium-ranking members of the military in order to obtain weapons, assault rifles and explosives. And already two army members have been charged with these offenses. That's what the Zetas have done.
The Zetas have established contact with the gangs in order to operate in a territory that is controlled by gangs. And this has made the violence worse? Because in the end, every death counts, no matter who dies. It happens just like it would in a war. When there's a war, soldiers die, but also civilians die. In this case, more gang members are dying than civilians. Now, there's a point I would like to make. El Salvador has about 11 deaths per day. It has the highest murder rate, 63%, 67%, per 100,000 people. But it's in proportion to the population that exists in El Salvador. There are more deaths in Mexico, 40 deaths per day. But the rate is much lower, 30 or 32 deaths per 100,000 people. It's relative. I'm not minimizing the problem, but we must diagnose it so that we know where it comes from and how to confront it. If Mexico is having such a hard time dealing with drug trafficking, what can a small country like El Salvador, a poor country like El Salvador, do to confront the extraordinary buying power of the drug cartels? What can, you, what can your country's institutions do to resist it? This is why we have a regional strategy. Of course, compared to the immense economic power of the drug cartels, there's very little we can do if we depend on the budget of each of our governments separately. In Central America alone, the drug traffickers move more than $100 billion. That's more than all the Central American countries' budgets put together. El Salvador's budget doesn't even reach $4 billion. What can a country with a $4 billion budget do against criminal organizations that move $100 billion? Very little. The war that we must fight continuously against organized crime, against drug trafficking, is not just about police confrontation or military confrontation or a crackdown on crime. It's also the problem of resolving the lack of opportunity that exists in our countries in terms of employment and education. That's the most important war we must fight.